This video is about Igor Guzenko and the history and commemoration of what became known as the Guzenko Affair in Canadian and world history. Igor Guzenko was born in 1919 in Rogachev, about 100 kilometers northwest of Moscow. Igor attended the Moscow Architectural Institute. While at the Institute, he met his future wife, Svetlana Guseva. At the start of World War II, he joined the military, where he trained for a year as a cipher clerk. In 1943, he was stationed in Ottawa, where for two years he enciphered outgoing messages and deciphered incoming messages for the GRU, Soviet Military Intelligence. His position gave him knowledge of Soviet espionage activities in the West. At the end of the war, upon being informed that he and his family were to be sent back to the Soviet Union, he and his wife decided to warn the West and to try to stay in Canada with their son. The Japanese formally surrendered and World War II came to an end on September 2nd, 1945. Just three days later, in what would become the first significant international incident of the Cold War, Igor Guzenko walked out of the Soviet Embassy in Ottawa with 109 documents exposing the extent of Soviet espionage in Canada. Over the next two days, he approached a number of offices to tell his story, including the Ottawa Journal newspaper and the Minister of Justice, but no one would listen to him. Eventually, he asked a neighbor if he and his family could spend the night in their apartment as he feared for his life. Sure enough, during the night, the Soviet agents from the embassy broke into his apartment looking for him. The following day, Guzenko was able to establish contact with the RCMP. Finally, someone was listening. The Guzenkos were taken to the secret location of a World War II training center known as Camp X, located near Whitby on Lake Ontario. Guzenko provided the RCMP with information which eventually led to the exposure of a spy ring in Canada, along with multiple arrests and a number of convictions. In 1946, a Royal Commission of Inquiry, led by two justices of the Supreme Court of Canada, investigated Guzenko's revelations. The Tashiro Kellogg Commission report concluded that by what he had done, Guzenko placed Canada in his debt. Guzenko and his family were given another identity by the Canadian government out of fear of Soviet reprisals. Many people in the West admired the Soviet military struggle against the Germans between 1941 and 1945. The role that the Soviets played between 1939 and 1941 in the partition of Poland and the supplying of Hitler with vital resources were largely ignored once Stalin found himself in a common struggle against Nazi Germany. To many, the Guzenko defection and the exposure of hostile Soviet espionage activities against the Western Allies came as a dramatic surprise. However, it would not have been a surprise to those who had paid attention. A few books appeared before, during, and after World War II, which exposed the operations of the clandestine world of the Soviet secret police. Walter Krivitsky was born in 1899 in the Galician region of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. He joined the Soviet secret police around 1917 and subsequently operated in a number of Western European countries. He defected in 1937 as the purges were ongoing in the Soviet Union. Krivitsky produced an inside account of Stalin's underhanded methods. His account appeared in book form as In Stalin's Secret Service, and the UK edition was titled I Was Stalin's Agent. It was published in November 1939. Krivitsky was subsequently found dead with a bullet in the head in a Washington hotel room in 1941. Viktor Kravchenko was born in 1905 in Ekaterinoslav in the Russian Empire, which is now Dnipropetrovsk in Ukraine. He became an engineer specializing in metallurgy 
and an enthusiastic Communist Party of the Soviet Union member, which he joined in 1929. Kravchenko left, later became disillusioned by witnessing the effects of collectivization while working in the steel mills in the Donbass region in his native Ukraine, and his personal mistreatment during the Great Purge, although he ultimately managed to avoid arrest. During World War II, Kravchenko served as a captain in the Soviet Army until 1943, when he was posted to the Soviet Purchasing Commission in Washington, D.C. On the 4th of April, 1944, Kravchenko requested political asylum in the United States and subsequently lived under a pseudonym, fearing assassination by Soviet agents. Kravchenko wrote a memoir, I Choose Freedom, a bestseller both in the U.S. and Europe, containing extensive revelations on the collectivization in the Soviet Union, the Soviet prison camp system, and the use of penal labor. In 1966, Kravchenko was found dead from a gunshot wound to the head at his desk in his apartment in New York City. I was Stalin's agent by W. G. Krivitsky. Igor Guzenko wrote two books. The first, This Was My Choice, is a biographical account of his life and defection. The book was subsequently turned into a classic Cold War movie titled The Iron Curtain, produced by 20th Century Fox. The second book is a novel titled The Fall of a Titan, which won the Governor General's Literature Award in 1954. In 1960, Igor Guzenko's wife, Svetlana Guzenko, also wrote an autobiographical book about her youth in the Soviet Union, titled Before Igor. Igor Guzenko died of natural causes in 1982. Svetlana died in September 2001 and was buried next to him in an unmarked grave. These are hardcover and softcover paperback editions of the first book that Igor Guzenko wrote.
And this is the paperback. This is a copy of Igor Guzenko's 1954 novel, The Fall of a Titan. Igor Guzenko had a habit of giving, uh, drawing in the opening of the book whenever he gave it to someone and quoting from a section, a paragraph in the book. I found this one in a used bookstore. Autographed. This is a copy of Svetlana Guzenko's book, Before Igor, My Memories of a Soviet Youth. These are copies of pictures of Igor and Svetlana Guzenko obtained from the National Archives of Canada, which are apparently pictures from their passports when they came to Canada in 1943. This is a copy of the final report of the Royal Commission of Inquiry into Soviet Activities, the full title being the Royal Commission to investigate the facts relating to and the circumstances surrounding the communication by public officials or other persons in positions of trust of secret and confidential information to agents of a foreign power. Chaired by Justice Robert Tashiro, Justice Roy Kellogg, Commissioners. It's dated June 27, 1946 was apparently released to the public on July 15th, 1946.
At page 648, the justices concluded by stating something very important. In our opinion, Guzenko, by what he has done, has rendered great public service to the people of this country and thereby has placed Canada in his debt. In 1981, over 6,000 pages of transcripts from the Royal Commission hearings were made public. Two Canadian historians, Robert Bothwell and J.L. Granitstein, together went through it and picked some of the most important stuff out of the 6,000 pages and published this book, The Guzenko Transcripts. In 1999, an amateur historian in Ottawa by the name of Andrew Kafchak began a campaign to honor and recognize Igor and Svetlana Guzenko's courage and contribution to Canadian and Western national security by lobbying the federal and municipal governments to unveil commemorative plaques in Dundonald Park in Ottawa across the street from the building where the Guzenkos lived at the time of their defection. On July 18, 2002, based on the positive recommendation from the Historic Sites and Monuments Board of Canada, Heritage Minister Sheila Copps officially designated the Guzenko Affair as an event of national historic significance. Shortly thereafter, on September 5, 2002, the Guzenko family held a public memorial service at the Mississauga Cemetery where Igor and Svetlana are buried and unveiled a headstone with the name Guzenko on it. On June 4, 2003, the City of Ottawa held a ceremony in Dundonald Park to unveil the city's memorial plaque honoring Igor Guzenko. On April 15, 2004, the Canadian federal government unveiled another memorial plaque commemorating the Guzenko affair. At the same time, a two-day symposium on April 14 and 15 was held at the Library and Archives of Canada with a number of speakers from various countries who spoke about Guzenko's impact on security and intelligence in the Western world. A collection of the papers presented at the symposium were subsequently published in a book titled The Guzenko Affair in 2006. And in 2004, Andrew Kafchak wrote a text titled Remembering Guzenko, The Struggle to Honor a Cold War Hero, published by the McKenzie Institute of Toronto. This is an article from the National Post on Monday, July 22nd, 2002, uh, confirming and reporting that the Minister of Heritage had made the official historic designation of the Guzenko Fair as an event of national historic significance. And this is the program for the public memorial service that was held on September 5, 2002 for Svetlana and Igor Guzenko. On January 13, 2003, the Ottawa Citizen newspaper carried a front-page article about Igor Guzenko and the efforts of Andrew Kafchak to have uh, the memorial plaques unveiled at Dundonald Park. The article was written by the former mayor, 
Jim Watson. Uh, he had uh, resigned his position after the first term as mayor, and this was uh, the first of a series of columns which he uh, wrote for the Ottawa Citizen. The article was quite lengthy and carried over onto page two. These are official invitation cards from the City of Ottawa and the Mayor at the time, Mr. Bob Chiarelli, uh, to the plaque unveiling ceremony in Donald Park, which was held on June 4th, 2003. in French. This is a copy of an article uh, about the efforts to uh, remember Igor Guzenko that was published in the Globe and Mail on Saturday, May 31st, 2003, written by Jeff Sallet. On June 4th, 2003, there was a beautiful editorial on the editorial page of the Ottawa Citizen titled, Remember Guzenko, the Soviet des defector deserves more recognition for his courage. The Ottawa Sun also published on June 3rd, 2003, an article, Soviet Spy Buster Finally Gets His Jew, 58 Years Later, Man's Efforts to Be Recognized. On Wednesday, June 4th, 2003, the Ottawa Sun also gave local history buff Andrew Kafchak the thumbs up sign for a job well done in getting the city to unveil the historic plaques honoring Guzenko. This is a copy of the city plaque, what the city plaque looks like in Don Donald Park. And here is a picture of the building where Igor Guzenko lived with his wife Svetlana and their two-year-old son. They lived apparently in apartment number four here on the right side on the second floor. This is a picture of the Russian Soviet embassy at the time. And the text is in in English and French.
This is the program of the plaque commemoration ceremony that took place on June 4th, 2003 by the City of Ottawa in Dundonald Park. This is a picture of Councillor Elizabeth Arnold, who was a Master of Ceremonies at the City Unveiling event. This is a copy of the speaking notes which were used and the order of uh, the speakers at the uh, unveiling ceremony. These are pictures of uh, Mayor Bob Shirelli speaking um, at the ceremony. And these are copies of uh, the Mayor's speaking notes. There's another picture of Mayor Bob Shirelli and uh, Elizabeth Arnold in the bottom picture with uh, an idea of what the crowd and the media cameras were like that day. This is a picture of Evie Wilson speaking, the eldest daughter of Igor and Svetlana Guzenko and a family spokesperson. And this is a copy of the speech that uh, Evie Wilson made at the ceremony. And this is a picture of Evie while she was speaking, holding up a copy of the citizenship documents signed by King George VI on, uh, in 1947. These are some pictures of Andrew Kafchek speaking at the event. And this is a copy of his speech.
Uh, this is a picture of the actual unveiling itself taking place. There's a little uh, sort of a cover blanket, a sheet of black over the um, uh, plaque, and there's Councillor Arnold, Andrew Kafchak, Evie Wilson, and Mayor Bob Shirelli, and they pulled the plaque away, or the cover, and there's there's the plaque. And this is what it looked like immediately after being unveiled. And this is a plaque, a picture of the replica of the plaque being presented right after the ceremony to Evie Wilson by the mayor and Andrew Kafchak. Uh, nice framed framed copy as a souvenir. And here's another picture. Compliments of the uh, the mayor, an official city photographer. The next day there was quite a bit of coverage in the uh, uh, broadcast and especially print media. This is an article from the uh, the Ottawa Sun. And this was an article from the Thursday, June 5th edition of 2003 of the Ottawa Citizen. This is a copy of a news release from April 6, 2004 from Carleton University announcing the organization of a two-day conference on the Guzenko affair and the early days of the Canadian counter-espionage. The conference was primarily organized by Professor Martin Rudner of Carleton University and coincided with the federal government's unveiling of the plaque commemorating the Guzenko affair. And this was the program for the two-day conference that was held in the auditorium at Library and Archives Canada on Wellington Street in downtown Ottawa. As part of the conference on the second day, the federal government unveiled the um, federal plaque, and this was a program marking that event. And of course, O Canada, and then in the other official language, French. 
This is a picture of Senator Mac Harb speaking on behalf of the government of Canada and Evie Wilson afterwards joining Senator Harb to unveil the plaque uh, during the uh, ceremony at the conference and the plaque later that afternoon was installed in the park next to the City of Ottawa plaque. And just as was the case with the City of Ottawa plaque, here's a uh, small copy version of it being given to Evie Wilson uh, by Senator Harb on behalf of the Government of Canada. After the conference, a number of people on the second day went to Don Donald Park to see the plaque once it was installed. And here's a picture of some of the people who attended the conference who came to see the plaque. And these are some celebratory pictures after the unveiling both the city plaque in 2003 and the federal plaque in 2004 across the street from 511 Somerset Street West in Ottawa. This is another picture uh, after the federal unveiling of the plaque in Dundonald Park with uh, from left to right Andrew Kafchak, Evie Wilson, Alex Boire, and Professor Christopher Andrew from Cambridge University who was also a speaker at the conference. On April 13, 2004, just before the federal unveiling of the plaque, there was also a editorial in the Ottawa Citizen newspaper about the event. There was also an article on uh, Friday, April 16, 2004, in the Ottawa Sun. The papers that were delivered at the conference were subsequently published in 2006 in this book. The Guzenko Affair, Canada and the Beginnings of the Cold War Counter Espionage. Besides having a chapter in this book about the process of lobbying two levels of government to unveil historic commemorative plaques honoring Igor Guzenko, Andrew Kavchuk also wrote a separate text. Remember, remembering Guzenko, the struggle to honor a Cold War hero. This was published by the Mackenzie Institute in Toronto in April of 2004. It describes what um, Igor and Svetlana Guzenko did 
why it's so important that they be commemorated, and describes in chronological order the challenges of getting historic recognition for a significant event in Canada and the process that Andrew Kafchik went through. The text also contains, at the very beginning, the first written um, text by the family on behalf of the a preface on behalf of the Guzenko family, first time they've written something publicly about their parents. This text written by one of the daughters, Alexandria Boer. There are two other videos on YouTube related to this one. The first is Igor Guzenko Historic Plaques, which is also available in French. And the second is Guzenko Plaques Reports and Interviews 2002 to 2004, which is a compilation of um, television reports, news reports, and interviews from that time.